My name's Ryan Woolley, a.k.a. Mr. Flicks and Kicks. I'm going to show you my complete 4K and Blu-ray movie collection. As you can tell, I have quite an obsession with sneakers and movies, so I thought, why not start a YouTube channel about it? For these movies right here, we're going to give a quick synopsis for some of these, and then others just pretty much going to hold it up and keep it moving, because this is quite an extensive collection, and I don't want to be here for a century. One eternity later. So, the first movie I have is Crawl. Pretty much you've got a good human interest to where you got crocodiles, eating people, and you have a Category 5 hurricane all intertwined in one, so pretty suspenseful movie. Next, Daybreakers in 4K. I'm not a huge vampire enthusiast by any means, but this right here was certainly a good one. You had uh, Ethan Hawke, William Dafoe, and Sam Neill, so a pretty good cast, and yeah, not bad. Selfless with Ryan Reynolds, a pretty good action movie. Annabelle Comes Home, the worst movie out of the Conjuring series, in my opinion. Jurassic Park. What can I say other than you have arguably the best director ever, you have an incredible story with dinosaurs, and you have some of the best music you're ever going to hear. So Jurassic Park, to me, is an all-time classic and favorite of mine. Life uh, finds a way. It Chapter 2, the remake. Uh, the first one was better, the second one I really did not like nearly as much. The Invisible Man. The trailer for this really caught my attention. It's one of the first, actually not one of the first, one of the last movies that came out before COVID came down and completely obliterated the movie-going experience and anything entertaining-wise. Didn't even get a chance to see this in theaters. I uh, ordered this on demand with a friend of mine and definitely enjoyed it. The Green Inferno. Yeah, quite a weird fucked up movie. Cannibalism, a lot of blood, definitely a disturbing movie. If you're someone who is easily, I guess, squeamish or offended is the word, I don't even know what the adjective to use, uh, you don't watch this movie. This is a pretty intense watch. The Gallows, pretty much about a kid who died during a school play of his, and then he basically haunts the theater company production of the next time they cast the same play like 25 years later. Definitely a interesting type of movie, I would say. Yeah, uh, not one of the better horror movies ever, but one that's in my rotation because I certainly am a junkie when it comes to horror movie watching. A DreamWorks classic as far as I'm concerned, Chicken Run. A lot of people probably don't know this movie or they vaguely remember it. It's very foggy. Uh, Chicken Run, a very good movie. Easy A, Emma Stone. Drag Me to Hell. This was a really good one. Uh, this is one of the best PG-13 horror movies I've ever seen, and I love this movie because the ending doesn't play the same. I think a lot of times movies, they go for the safe ending, as I would call it. The safe, feel-good ending. This movie doesn't do that. It goes right for the gut punch, and I really appreciate that, because horror movies especially, they have to sometimes end f***ed up. And this movie brings that. See No Evil, The Avengers, Strangers on a Train, a good Alfred Hitchcock movie. Goodfellas, a mafia mobster classic, Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. This is a movie you must like and watch. Happy Death Day to you. The first one was better. The second one was a little corny for my liking. Uh, not the first one wasn't, but the second one even more so. These movies, though, I definitely have fun with. Casino in 4K, Sharon Stone, Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, another classic movie about the mob's multi-million dollar casino in Las Vegas. Anything, everything you want in a movie. You have just complete sleaziness, corruption, murder, violence, everything good you want in a movie. Everything that I personally want in a movie is there. A Bug's Life, this is a Pixar Disney classic right here. Pretty much all bug movies are just really good. This movie and Ants are two of my most favorite animated movies. Obsessed, this is a movie where stalking takes it to a whole new level. Bad Teacher, American Pie 2, great movie. Saturday Night Fever. Wrong turn one through five, you got mutant hillbillies. Pretty terrifying. And these things don't feel pain, and they're, like, incredibly intelligent. But very suspenseful, and you got a lot of blood and graphic imagery. Eight Mile. Scary stories to tell in the dark in 4K. Kingsman, the Secret Service in 4K. State of Play. Signs, one of M. Night Shyamalan's better movies. Sicario, you got Josh Brolin, Benicio Del Toro, and Emily Blunt, and you got three FBI agents pursuing a really violent drug lord. This movie's pretty badass. It's a 
really suspenseful, intense watch. It's a movie that is extremely well done. This is a movie after watching, you're like, that's damn good. Birds of Prey and the Mantabious Emancipation <laughs> And the Fantabious Emancipation of Harley Quinn. It turned out way better than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be one of those feminist out of hell type movies. Uh, Harley Quinn, she's a sacred character to me. I really liked her in the animated Batman series. Margot Robbie, I thought, did a good job. This was a fun watch. 21 Bridges. 28 Days Later, you got a zombie movie taking place in London, England. Animal House, this is one of these movies that's a comedy, like, pillar, a stepping stone for all the rest of the great comedies that have come after it. I Am Legend, to me, this is personally the scariest movie I think I've ever seen. When you take into account the fact that Will Smith's character is completely isolated in all of New York City, you have these mutant creatures that have, like, superhero abilities with their ability to jump and run. Pretty terrifying, and the isolation in this movie is really scary. So, I Am Legend... Definitely an intense watch. A movie that you cannot watch too often. It's just extremely draining, I think, mentally to watch this movie. Unfaithful. One of these movies where you watch it and you're like, if you're someone who's thinking about cheating on your spouse, completely fuck up your life. The Hills Have Eyes 2. This is the remake. Uh, good horror movie. Graphic. If you're going to make a horror movie, make it R. Make it bloody. Make it graphic. I'll watch it. Hellfest. This to me is a disturbing movie. A serial killer who goes into one of those Halloween screen parks and you don't know that actually someone's killing people because people are screaming. There's knives, you know, or fake knives. Chainsaw noises, screaming. It looks like a horror murder scene already, the whole screen park, so you can't tell this guy's picking off this group of teenagers one by one. It, the remake. Really good. Halloween, the complete collection. You have in this Halloween 1 through 5. Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween H2O, Halloween Resurrection, Halloween The Remakes, 2007 and 2009, Rob Zombie directed those. And you're just going to have fun watching these. Not necessarily great cinematography here, but if you want, at least I'm someone, once I watch the first one, I have to binge watch the whole series. That's how it goes with Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, Alien, whatever the case may be. If it's a complete series or trilogy, once I watch one, I have to watch them all. Halloween, an entertaining series. American Psycho, Christian Bale, he has a pretty disturbing character in this movie. Arrival in 4K. I'm someone who enjoys the concept of extraterrestrial life, aliens, alien visitation, all of the above. I was looking for movies that had high scores on Rotten Tomatoes. I came across this. I watched this trailer, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to buy this. I watched it, and I really enjoyed this movie. I have to watch it again because this is one of these movies that it's a lot to seep in uh, and to take in. To, you know, to interpret and all that, but I like that it was an alien movie that had a different approach. It wasn't a War of the Worlds, Independence Day, aliens are coming to kill us necessarily. It was aliens more so visiting us and kind of wanting to know what we're about and kind of observe us type of movie, which I appreciated that it was a different take. Cloverfield. Now this movie, I live on Long Island, New York, and this movie takes place in New York City. The handheld camera shaking, a lot of people thought that was an element of the movie that made it not necessarily good or kind of, I don't know, not appealing to watch. I actually found it to be part of the reason I actually enjoyed the movie a lot more was that you actually felt like you were there holding the camera. J.J. Abrams is directing the second Cloverfield. It's going to be shot traditionally. It's not going to have the handheld uh, camera effect. Looking forward to seeing what they're doing with that because I thought this was better than the next movie that came out after this 10 Cloverfield Lane. Anaconda. You got a snake eating people in the Amazon jungle. Uh, you have a pretty... Like, Good cast here. I mean, as far as names go, you got Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube, John Voight, Owen Wilson. Not bad. One of these movies that's kind of garbage junk food, but every once in a while you like to consume some junk food. As far as I go with movies, yeah, it's fun to watch this. 2001, A Space Odyssey in 4K. Gladiator in 4K. This is a movie a little bit like 300. After watching, you get charged up. This is kind of a sad story, though, too, but a really good action movie. You got Russell Crowe, a young Joaquin Phoenix. The Hunt, one of the last movies, again, like The Invisible Man that came out before Corona came down and completely wiped out movie-going watching for a, quite a while. You can go to the movies now, but definitely not the same. Uh, the Hunt, yeah, I ordered this on demand as well because did not get a chance to see this in theaters. Not a bad movie. Kind of uh, a movie that really is good in the horror comedy genre which I think is an incredible combination to have. You get, you know, your suspense and your scares, your jump scares and your intense scenes.
but you also get some bad dialogue and comedy, which is a genre I also love. So to me, that combination will never get old. Seven, you have a young Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. This is a movie that makes you think, and I like movies that are kind of have a psychological element to them. I actually watched this movie the first time with my mother. I showed her Saw, and she's like, I know a movie that you might like if you like this. So I watched Seven, and it's a movie I definitely like. The ending for this, definitely f up. 47 meters down uncaged. I know this is not a movie that's definitely a high-end movie, or even a good movie for that matter. But I'm someone who enjoys shark movies very much, and if you have sharks or aliens, uh, I'm going to watch the movie. And this right here is one of those type of movies for me that when you get hot chicks and violence, sharks, eating people, sign me up. Brooklyn's Finest. 30 Days of Night, Dark Days. This was actually not a bad sequel. The first movie to me is extremely... Frightening and terrifying. Uh, yeah, people stranded in Alaska with vampires for literally 30 days, 30 nights straight, actually. 1408, this to me is a, a bit of a horror movie that's under the radar and not quite appreciated as much as it should be. Uh, I really like this. Uh, John Cusack, Samuel L. Jackson. This was a pretty good one. Knock, knock. My friend introduced this to me, and yeah, again, if you're someone who's thinking about cheating on your spouse, don't do it, because your life will get f***ed up, just like, just like Keanu Reeves in this movie. And what's kind of funny is, Keanu Reeves, this is a role I definitely would not have foreseen him being in, so it was a bit of a mind f*** to watch him in this type of movie and role. Uh, yeah, definitely a movie that will scare the pants on you if you're in a relationship, other than being with your spouse, of course. Jerry Maguire, a good movie that shows the corruption of sports agents and how sleazy they can really be, and also a good love story. Jaws, the original shark movie, the best shark movie, and quite frankly, the movie of shark movies that will never be topped. You'll never be able to duplicate this or make a better one. I love it has the VHS packaging for this, you know, the big VHS uh, movie cases. Some of the most eerie music, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Jurassic Park, The Lost World, an okay movie, not nearly as good as the first Jurassic Park, though. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I know this movie didn't have high scores or great reviews or feedback, but I'm just a sucker for dinosaurs in Jurassic Park slash world movies now. I had fun with this. I, I really did. It was, it was a fun movie to watch, I thought. War of the Worlds in 4K. Tom Cruise, excellent actor. The only thing that's not good about this movie is Dakota Fanning just fucking screaming the whole movie. God damn, it's really annoying. Other than that, this movie was pretty much perfect. You had aliens trying to take over the world. Really suspenseful, a lot of action. And a movie that, like, yeah, if that happened, that would be... That'd be pretty horrifying. 101 Dalmatians, the animated version. Pure gold, I think, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm someone who loves dogs. I have four of them. So this movie right here is something that I can kind of understand and get my... Grasp around. I'm only 97 short. Corella DeVille, one of the best villains you're ever going to see as well. Annihilation. This is one of my favorite movies. A really great sci-fi movie. A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is the remake. Kind of garbage, but I do enjoy it because Freddy Krueger as a villain is just a great character. But had him look really f up. He didn't look like how he looked in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And they kind of try to combine all the Nightmare on Elm Streets into one movie. And he got this, which was pretty much hot garbage. The Warrior is a movie that's exploring the gang life of New York City in, what was this, the 70s? 70s or 80s. Uh, definitely an entertaining flick. Django Unchained, an over-the-top Quentin Tarantino movie. Valkyrie, the Nazi resume's inside plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. Tom Cruise in this movie. A very strong performance. And anything that's a history or war movie, I'm absolutely someone who's going to be watching that. I really just think a lot of war history movies are just excellent movies. Some of the best you're ever going to see. This is certainly one that's a really solid one. The Visit, another M. Night Shyamalan movie that's pretty good. There's one character in this movie, though, that's really fucking annoying. And I, when I mean annoying, I mean really annoying. If you've seen this movie, you know damn well who I'm talking about. Other than that, really good watch. VHS 2. Varsity Blues. 
Venom. This is a movie that left me wanting a little more. I think Tom Hardy, though, as Venom was really good. Venom is one of the best villains you're ever going to see. One of the coolest looking, for sure. Uh, definitely looking to see what they do with Venom in the Marvel franchise in the future. Zero Dark Thirty in 4K. Another great war and history movie about the U.S. military's plot to assassinate and locate Osama bin Laden. Really intense, suspenseful movie. Ready or Not, this was a movie that also was really good in the horror comedy genre. Samara Weaving, I thought, had a strong performance in this movie. You're going to have fun watching this one, but definitely the ending is really kind of crazy and makes you laugh. Grease, a classic. I'm not someone who's big into musicals, but this was a good one. Pet Cemetery, the remake. Suicide Squad in 4K. Dark Waters. Tusk, one of the most fucked up movies I've ever seen. I guess this would also fall in the horror comedy genre, but definitely if there's a category for fucked upness, uh, this movie would be at the top of the list for sure, or damn near near there. Really kind of a odd movie. The Grey, a really good Liam Neeson movie. The ending for this was kind of, I don't know, bittersweet, kind of a cool ending, but I, I'm someone who... Those open-ended endings where they don't solidify exactly what happens can kind of be, I don't want to say off-putting or annoying, but yeah, it can be. Uh, this was one of those. I can appreciate the ending, but I don't have to like it either. You got a bunch of guys in Alaska, their plane crashes, the survivors basically are left in the Alaskan wilderness, and wolves are picking them off one by one. A really suspenseful flick. Hereditary. One of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Tony Collette, her face to me is like one of the scariest things I've ever seen. I mean, absolutely fucking terrifying. Her character in this movie to me is extremely disturbing. All of these A24 movies are definitely aiming for the disturbing, fucked up, leave you on the edge of your seat type vibe. Ari Aster, too, the guy who directed this, he also made Midsommar. This guy is just taking acid every night. There's no other way you could direct two movies like this. Chloe, a Liam Neeson movie that you would not expect him to be in. You also have Amanda Seyfried and Julianne Moore in this movie. This was a movie that I thought Fifty Shades of Grey was looking to be, but was not quite. There's a lot of sexual graphic talk in this movie. There's a quote from a movie review at the bottom that says, Intriguing, darkly exotic. That's a perfect way to describe this movie. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. That's the theme of this movie. The Belko Experiment, a bunch of office workers that are trapped within their office building and they have to kill each other and it's last man standing wins. Cast away? Wilson! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson! I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson! I'm sorry! Really good Tom Hanks movie. Halloween, this is the Halloween that takes place, what, like 40 years later after the original one? I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Jamie Lee Curtis basically is Rambo in this movie with the guns and she's Booby trapped her house, and it's like fortified like that of a military trap house. Michael Myers is, what, 70, and he's still killing people. One of those movies that's really out there. Wasn't that good, but I'll throw it on every once in a while, though, because I'm just someone who loves horror movies that much. Zombieland Double Tap. Not as good as the first one, but a solid movie, though. Inception. Hitch. Ice Age, The Meltdown, Shrek. There are very few movies that are perfect. This is one right here, though. I mean, absolutely a DreamWorks masterpiece right there. There's no other way to describe it. This is a movie you could watch over and over again. I don't care how old you are, you're going to love it. She's married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! The Man Who Knew Too Much. The Prodigy. This is basically an updated version of The Omen. Psycho, one of Alfred Hitchcock's best movies. Don John, a very crude, sexually explicit movie. Uh, but again, though, I really love those crude, vulgar movies with crappy dialogue. This is one of those. Captain America, the first Avenger. Fatal Attraction. This is another movie where, again, if you're thinking about cheating or you have before, it could go this way and completely ruin and fuck up your life. Michael Douglas, Glenn Close. A really good movie, but a truly horrifying movie. Full Metal Jacket. Pixar Short Films Collection Volume 2. These little short films right here are the perfect segue into the main feature Pixar film. Feel good type short films. And they're a great icebreaker. And I'm just going to binge watch all these short films. Deep Blue Sea got genetically altered sharks. 
Darkest Hour in 4K. Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill, a great historical figure. This is an excellent movie. The Uninvited. The Ugly Truth. V for Vendetta. The Accountant in 4K. Ben Affleck, a damn good actor. The Dictator. Crude, stupid humor. Pretty much what you expect out of a Sasha Baron Cohen movie, just a bunch of dumbness going on. The Boss Baby, a good DreamWorks picture. What makes this movie really hilarious is, too, you have a baby in a, in a suit, and Alec Baldwin's the voice of it. It's really something about it that's extremely humorous. The Black Panther. Rest in peace, Chadwick Bosman. Wakanda forever. Forrest Gump. Dead Poet Society. I think every teacher that's great has a little bit of Robin Williams' character in them. I think this is a really... It's a sad movie, but it's also an uplifting movie as well, simultaneously. North by Northwest. Scream 4. The Meg. Jason Statham was meant to play in this movie. You have a giant megalodon shark that comes up from a deep trench and just is basically unleashing havoc. Really good action movie. We definitely need a second Meg movie with Jason Statham in it. The Silence of the Lambs. Anthony Hopkins, as far as a psychological terror villain, uh, did a good job as Hannibal Lecter. Jodie Foster was good in this movie. Buffalo Bill. This is a movie that is just a really good psychological thriller. Godzilla, King of the Monsters in 4K. I kind of was disappointed in this movie. I thought the human characters who nobody gives a f*** about had way too much screen time. Godzilla needs more. The other Godzilla movie that came out in 2014, I was underwhelmed with that movie as well. I'm hoping for the Godzilla and Kong movie we get a great amount of screen time for Godzilla and King Kong. The Last House on the Left. The Little Mermaid. The Lodge. The Maniac in 4K. I say it's just another movie that's just perfection. I would not change anything about this film. Whoa! Woo! Yeah! Who's up for round two? Jumanji. The good one with Robin Williams. Jarhead. The Joker. Joaquin Phoenix was incredible. The Joker needed his own movie. The Joker is just one of the best villains ever, and in the Batman series, this was just an incredible movie. Definitely a disturbing psychological movie. The Amityville Horror. I'm someone who lives on Long Island, New York, so Amityville is about 40 minutes from me. This movie is just garbage, though. It's god-awful. It's not scary. It's just boring and not very good. This movie was disappointing. The Devil's Candy. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Sorority Row. Torn Curtain, The Scorpion King, Iron Man, classic Marvel movie. Let me just say this with the Marvel movies. They are intergalactic treasures. They're holy grails. They're any positive descriptive adjective you want to use to commemorate something and to give it great acknowledgement. That's what Marvel movies are. They're just fantastic movies. Avengers Age of Ultron. Feast. If you're looking for a movie that has graphic, bloody gore scenes, watch Feast. I Confess. Overlord in 4K, you have Nazi zombie super soldiers, extremely high intensity action packed movie. The Fourth Kind, Aliens, Alien Abduction, Extraterrestrial Life, you know by now watching this, I'm a huge fan of that. This movie though, however, not very good. The Fourth Kind, uh, I could pass on this, but I watch it every once in a while to remind myself though that it's not very good. And sometimes you need to watch a crappy movie to appreciate a really great one. Contagion. Unfortunately, in the times of COVID, this movie was a little extra terrifying when I watched it. Definitely a little more eerie and frightening uh, with all that going on. Dawn of the Dead, a really great high action-packed zombie movie with a lot of blood and violence, and those are great elements to have in a really entertaining movie. This is obviously not a great movie with great acting, but it's got a high intensity. It's just a really fun watch, and I can watch this movie very often. Black Swan, kind of a horror movie in a way, and you got, again, a psychological mind f Those are always fun movies to watch. And Mila Kunis and Natalie Portman have a sex scene. This is a really well done movie. World War Z, this movie was a little disappointing. It's a PG-13 zombie movie. You can't have a zombie movie and have it be PG-13. You just are missing too much of the violent, bloody element that you could add to it. Should have been an R rating. 
However, though, I find this movie just extremely rewatchable. It's a pandemic, end-of-the-world type scenario, which are movies that I just find really fascinating. Uh, documentaries as well. Uh, Brad Pitt had a good performance in this movie. Definitely looking forward to seeing the second World War Z movie. It's been long overdue. Into the Blue, Jessica Alba at her peak. Just extremely sexy looking. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. This is just kind of a fun treasure hunting type movie with crime and violence in it as well. A fun watch. The Spider-Man trilogy. Tobey Maguire, I'm sorry, he'll always be Spider-Man. I think Tom Holland is a really good Spider-Man for sure. The Andrew Garfield ones I thought were garbage, but Tom Holland as Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe definitely is really good. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies will always be near and dear to my heart. The first two, exceptional movies, like really great. The third one, Venom did not have enough screen time, and Sandman, I thought, was a bland villain at best. The first two with the Green Goblin, Doc Oct was really good. Uh, I look upon this trilogy very fondly. Scream, the three movie collection. American Sniper. This is an extremely well done movie. Clint Eastwood as a director is fantastic. This is a movie that just makes you proud to be an American citizen. This guy, Chris Kyle, the individual who Bradley Cooper portrays, was just... He was an American hero, no doubt. This is one of my favorite movies. Black Hawk Down in 4K. House of a Thousand Corpses. The Intruder. Dante's Peak. The Strangers. To me, The Strangers is a horror movie that's a little more eerie and disturbing because it's within the realm of possibility. Obviously, a horror movie like Nightmare on Elm Street is a scary movie, but there's... No chance of something like that happening. Whereas this is absolutely plausible and possible. So it's always a little more terrifying to me. Definitely an ending that's extremely eerie. Scarface in 4K. Check out this montage of me as Scarface. So long, man. Have a good friend. Fuck you! I'm biased, I know, but I think that looks pretty legendary. 47 meters down. Would you rather Finding Dory? Independence Day. The Incredible Hulk in 4K. Meet the parents. I got nipples, Falker. Can you milk me? Chinsy cat, chinsy cat. I won't hurt you. Pacific Heights. Now, if you're a landlord, this movie's extra terrifying. Fired up. Sea Biscuit, Friends with Benefits, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, The Legend of Tarzan, Friday Night Lights, Doctor Strange, The Forest, Argo in 4K, Southpaw, Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Zack and Miri Make a Porno. Insidious, Taken and Taken 2, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, Nonstop, Notorious, The Original Pet Cemetery in 4K, Predator in 4K, The Lion King. This was one of the first, earliest movie memories I ever had. This movie I had on quite a bit as a young boy. Great music. Just a great story. The Lighthouse. The Karate Kid in 4K. The Kingsman Golden Circle in 4K. White Men Can't Jump. The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Trading Places. The Man Who Knew Too Much. Conjuring 2, not quite as good as the first one, I think, but really good. VHS, The Wrong Man, Blade Runner in 4K, Mother. This is a movie where you're watching it, you could be stone cold sober, and you feel like you are under the influence, drunk, out of your mind midway through the movie. You really do. I mean, I can only imagine if you are under the influence watching this movie where your mind will take you, because this is, movie is a mind in every sense of the word. Mean Girls. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the 2003 remake. Gone Girl. This is another movie 
That is a mind f in every sense of the word. And the plot twists in this movie and the direction it goes. This is a movie that really takes you for a wild ride. The Dark Knight trilogy. Christian Bale as Batman. The best Batman. In this, you have Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Heath Ledger as the Joker was incredible. Tom Hardy as Bane. And Liam Easton's character in Batman Begins was really good as well. This trilogy right here is really special. And in my theater room, when you cut all the lights off and you put this on, these movies are just some of the best to watch in 4K. The Mummy in 4K. Conjuring, one of the best horror movies you're ever going to see. The Nightmare on Elm Street, the Seven Film Collection. You have Nightmare on Elm Street 1 through 5, then you have Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Lone Survivor. American Reunion. Captain Marvel, Alice in Wonderland, Suspicion, The Grudge, American Gangster in 4K, Russell Crowe plays a police officer looking to tear down Denzel Washington's, his multi-million dollar empire, explores the chaotic Harlem drug scene. This is a really great movie of Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington, two guys that are on a lot of people's Mount Rushmore's of favorite actors. See No Evil 2. The Deer Hunter. This is a war movie, but it's a movie that is just more than just a war movie. It has to do with the psychological effects and trauma of coming back after serving in a war. This is a long movie. It's three hours, but it's a good one. Shutter Island, one of my favorite movies, and Leonardo DiCaprio on this movie is just fantastic. Everything from this movie to the place that it shot, the setting on this island with all these mental patients, and Leonardo DiCaprio's actor, and the, the ending for this movie is so incredible and so memorable. The Book of Eli, American Wedding, A Few Good Men. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! The Cabin in the Woods in 4K. The Curse of La Llorona, and I got this movie because it was part of the Conjuring universe, it had some sort of connection, so I picked it up, and this is just the average standard horror movie, I would say. Doctor Sleep in 4K, I'm somebody who really likes The Shining, and this movie answers some of the questions in relation to the ability of The Shining and the power and the abilities that you have with it, and also answers some questions about the hotel, so this movie to me was really good. Enemy of the State, a really great 90s action movie that's a thriller with Gene Hackman and Will Smith. Us, a great Jordan Peele horror movie. This was great, and Get Out was great, so definitely hoping Jordan Peele sticks to the horror movie-making genre. The Unborn. The Happy Time Murders, I'm someone who really grew up liking Sesame Street, and this is violent, crude, sexual humor. Melissa McCarthy was really funny. Uh, maybe we can get a second one of this? I mean, that was, uh, again, probably there's not a lot of appetite to have a second one, but I thought this movie was hysterical. Kong Skull Island is my favorite King Kong movie. It had a great human interest story element, but you had enough screen time with King Kong that it didn't take away from it being a King Kong movie. The setting it's shot in on this island and the colors and everything are just fantastic. And the monsters that are on the island are also incredible. Incredibly scary, actually. Definitely looking forward to the Kong vs. Godzilla movie. Uncut Gems. 2012, remember that? Nine years ago when we all thought we were going to die. Uh... Maybe this was supposed to be 2021, but just the numbers got scrambled up. A movie that is, like, again, it's a disaster, end-of-the-world movie, so I like it, but the fact that it was called 2012, now we're all here in 2021, and uh, this didn't happen, so. Deliver Us From Evil, a horror movie I think that's incredibly underrated. Brightburn in 4K. You have a super villain movie, and the super villain character in this movie is some skinny kid. It's not a character you would look at as like a super villain, like, you know, Venom or Green Goblin or anything like that, or Joker. So this was definitely a different movie, but I really enjoyed it, though. I thought it was good. Lights Out, one of my favorite PG-13 horror movies. Space Jam. Now, if you watched my sneaker reviews, you know that I love Space Jam. I mean, you got Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, the Monstars. I mean, you can't beat that. It really is incredible stuff, and this movie is just outstanding. The Town in 4K, this is a badass movie, and I went to college in Boston, so recognizing the streets of Boston and being a crime movie, 
And these crime FBI type movies are just always exciting and really good. The Hurt Locker. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Rudy, an inspirational story and a football movie, but more of an inspirational story. The Godfather, Part 2. Gone with the Wind, a classic movie, won 10 Academy Awards and had Best Picture in 1939. Guardians of the Galaxy. Spider-Man Far From Home in 4K. Tom Holland as Spider-Man is really good, and Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio the villain in this movie was really good. This was a really fun movie to watch in theaters, like all Marvel movies are. Frozen in 4K. This, to me, has some of the best music you're ever going to hear. I know it's a movie that's geared towards a female, young girl audience, but... I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fantastic. And uplifting like all Disney movies are. Annabelle. Black Christmas. And this movie has really nothing to do with Christmas. It's a serial killer crazy person that's living in the attic of a sorority house. And he's just slowly picking these sorority girls off one by one. Jurassic Park 3. The Spinosaurus was really cool in this movie. I thought this movie could have been a lot better. But it's an exciting movie and it's an action movie and it's got dinosaurs so... It's not a complete failure, but out of all the Jurassic Park movies, to me, this is the weakest. Jurassic World. After Jurassic Park, this is my favorite one. Avengers Infinity War in 4K. This was a movie where you went to the theater, and there's such a buzz and excitement in the air that you could feel it. It, it was incredible seeing this in theaters. And hopefully the movie-going experience comes back, and, like, really come back. Not half ass where it is now, where it's socially distanced and you have to wear a mask. Hopefully it comes back in its complete entirety, because watching this... Having a party or watching it at home, not the same as going to the theater and seeing it. Sonic the Hedgehog in 4K, one of the last movies that came out before COVID came and just completely obliterated the movie-going experience. I was someone, like many who are watching probably, that Sonic the Hedgehog, all the games growing up were so much fun and really cool. And this movie was, I thought at first, kind of... I don't want to say I was dreading watching it, because well, I was after the original trailer came out where Sonic looked like he was cracked out. Didn't look like him at all. And then they had the revamp and remake of the trailer, and I was like, all right. So after watching this, I was really pleased. I really liked it a lot. And definitely looking forward to seeing the second one. The Martian. Vertigo. 30 Days of Night, a really terrifying movie. You got vampires who have basically superhuman abilities that are looking for you. You're trapped in this town in Alaska with these things, and... Yeah, you're hiding for your life. I still will always think zombies are cooler than vampires, but this movie and Daybreakers were really good vampire flicks. Snakes on a Plane. Again, there are some times where you need junk food type movies. This right here is going to provide that for you with extremely bad dialogue, sexual content. <laughs> Snakes killing people on a plane. You have a suspenseful movie. This is a movie that you have to be able to enjoy. If you have a sense of humor and an open mind, you will enjoy this movie. Escape from Alcatraz, a really good Clint Eastwood movie. The fact that this is a true story is really incredible and in that they never found the guys that actually escaped from this prison. Annabelle Creation, out of all the Annabelle movies, this was the best one. Really dives into the origin of the doll and how it became possessed. Four, Lifeboat, Miracle, Sinister 2. Lake Placid, you got a killer crocodile in Alaska, and Betty White's in this movie, and she's a reason that this crocodile is there. So it's really fun and entertaining, and Betty White is hurling obscenities and vulgarities. Like, wow. If I had a dick, this is where I'd tell you to suck it. In the Line of Fire. A Clockwork Orange. A disturbing... Again, I know I have a lot of movies that are psychological mind f This is certainly one, though. I mean, and it's going into basically rehabbing people from f***ed up thoughts, and the methods in order to do that are f***ed up. A psychology class could totally be taught on this movie alone. Spider-Man Homecoming. Saw, the eight-film collection. I watched the first one, and I have to watch the rest of these. So after I watch the first Saw, I'm like, all right, I'm going to binge watch the other seven in a 72-hour time period. That's how it always goes. Thor Ragnarok, Thor The Dark World, The Crazies, The Exorcist. When I watched The Exorcist for the first time, I actually didn't like it all that much. I thought it was very overrated, and it was only after watching it a couple times and seeing the subtleties of the movie and what some of the key elements of the movie are, I agree now that it's an all-time classic for sure. Transcendence, 
Misery, if you're an author out there, this is your worst nightmare because this is a woman, Kathy Bates, who is basically obsessed with this author, James Conn. His car breaks down in a snowstorm, and uh, she kidnaps him and holds him hostage. Yeah, and won't let him go. Takers, Happy Death Day, Richard Jewell, another good Clint Eastwood-directed movie. This movie right here is definitely troubling, and it could show you how the media can totally just wreck and f*** up your life if they really want to. Tarzan, a classic Disney movie. Twister, this was one of the first movies I could remember watching that was not a Disney, Pixar, kids movie, geared for more of a mature adult audience, and it's a movie I look fondly upon for that reason alone. Plus, you have a disaster movie, it's a tornado just completely decimating everything, so that's pretty suspenseful. Hacksaw Ridge, a really intense graphic war movie, but a really inspiring, heroic, courageous story. Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious. Team America. Creators of South Park, an extremely explicit, vulgar movie with coarse language, but it's really hysterical and hilarious. Troy. The Gentleman in 4K. You pretty much have Goodfellas. In London, what you get with this movie, yeah. And you got Matthew McConaughey, Michelle Dockery, Hugh Grant, it's an all-star cast. Colin Farrell, Charlie Hunnam, Henry Golding, A Cure for Wellness. This is a top what the f movie for me. Extremely weird and definitely disturbing. You know, but sometimes you gotta watch a movie like that to make you feel uh, some feel something. I don't know, feel sometimes a movie making you feel weird and after watching it you get a I don't want to say a newfound appreciation and perspective on life, but you kind of do in a way. U.S. Marshals, Friday the 13th, the 8th film collection. You have Friday the 13th, 1 through 3, the final chapter, Part 5, The New Beginning, Part 6, Jason Lives, Part 7, The New Blood, and Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Pretty much after the fourth one, they were all hot pieces of garbage. The Patriot in 4K. The Town That Dreaded Sundown. This is the 2014 remake. The Godfather, my steelbook version of it. This is a great movie. It's really the perfect movie. Murder on the Orient Express. This movie, a little bit like Knives Out, makes you think of the game of Clue. It's a movie that's going to have you thinking, and I can appreciate a movie like that. Sometimes you want just mindless crap in a movie, and other times, at least for me, uh, and then other times you want to think and you want to be mentally stimulated a little bit. This is a movie that's going to do that for you. Piranha, you got hot chicks, you got piranhas eating people, got a lot of blood, vulgar language, sexual content. Okay, by watching, you've been hearing that over and over again, but I have to hammer that point across that movies like this are incredible in their own way. You gotta put movies in perspective, and I have this in perspective. Piranha, I think, to me, in that way, is a fantastic film. The Witch and the ending ruined this movie for me. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Out of all these Star Wars films, this answers an incredible piece of information, a question that takes place right before Episode 4, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. This was Jim Carrey at his best. It Follows. This had a limited movie theater release, but it was a big hit on Netflix, and for a Netflix movie, definitely a high-end one. The Ring, one of the best horror movies I've ever seen, and it has an original idea and concept, and anytime you can have an original idea, I definitely give you points for that. This movie does. When a Stranger Calls, this is a flick that it's a little bit like The Strangers, ironically. I guess having the movie, having the word stranger in your horror movie definitely is going to mean you have a solid one. Uh, within the realm of possibility, which to me is always the more frightening type of film, in my opinion, to watch. Just a creep calling this girl on the phone over and over again, and uh, yeah, this is definitely a suspenseful one. Hustlers in 4K, this kind of shows the sleazy side of strippers and the corruption that goes on within the business and uh, kind of the lengths they're going to go to to kind of <laughs> literally uh, take your money from you. Uh, but Jennifer Lopez has a really strong performance in this movie, and she looks great dancing, so it's an entertaining movie to watch. Armageddon, like Twister, this was a really good 90s action movie, one of the first movies I can remember watching that was not a movie geared towards children. Just a really good 90s action film. 
Beauty and the Beast in 4K. This is one of the earliest memories I have of just watching a movie in general with my mother. Watched this one extremely frequently, and it never gets old. I can still watch this movie to this day, and it just brings back those good feelings. It's a Disney classic, and uh, yeah, what else can I say other than that? I just love this movie. Hercules, another classic Disney movie. The Fog, an underrated 1980s horror movie. Really good one. Pixar Short Films Collection, Volume 3. Saving Private Ryan. This has one of the most intense but amazing opening scenes you're ever going to see. I mean, it's it's a disturbing one. It shows you the storm in Omaha Beach. This was just an incredible war movie. Might be the best war movie ever made. And it's certainly not, forget just war movies. This is one of the best movies ever made. Steven Spielberg directing this, Tom Hanks, Matt Damon. Hostel, if you are into gore and torturous type things, uh, you're going to like this movie. Me and my buddy really, really love this movie. If you want to just look at it as a movie that's just a torture, gore, porn type movie, you could do that. But it also has a deeper, disturbing meaning and concept behind it and ideas. Disturbing, but... Really well done. Eli Roth, uh, his movies are always, they're always going to be an eyebrow raiser. And you know what? When you're watching a movie, you want to just see something that's going to either shock you, make you laugh, or be entertained. And at times, disturbingly, this movie could do all three of those. Ratatouille, a great Disney Pixar movie. Got the first three Toy Stories on Steelbook. Toy Story, Toy Story 2, and Toy Story 3. Let me just say this. All four Toy Stories are... Incredible. I mean, how hard is it to make four really great movies? But hey, Pixar and Disney did it, and I just love these steel books. The artwork on the front of the covers, I think, is just fantastic, and I hold these movies near and dear to my heart. They're again early childhood movies. The first one, especially that was on rotation constantly as a young kid, left quite an impression on me, and uh, I'll never outgrow these movies like any Disney or Pixar movie. Come on, they're all-time great flicks. The inside is just majestic. Don't Breathe, this is a really great movie, and the reason I think it is because the antagonist and protagonist switch halfway through the movie. It's an original idea, and really kind of an amazing story, and the ending is really incredible. I cannot wait to see what happens in the second one, because the first one was good enough to just end it right there, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens for Don't Breathe 2. The Shallows, a shark movie, so you know I had to see it, but I also had to see it because Blake Lively's in it, and she's in a swimsuit uh, for most of the movie. It was definitely a must-see for me. Uh, she's enough of a reason to like this movie, but the storyline and the shark and what happens and how she kills the shark is kind of ridiculous and not believable in any way, but I still enjoy this movie. It's a shark movie, and you got the incredible Blake Lively, so I f*** with it. Ted, classic comedy. Then, when World War II happened and the atom bomb got dropped, there was this idea that every creature could potentially become a monster and have giant ants attacking people. It's funny how horror movies in the 1950s are now looked at as comedies. You watch them now and you laugh. It's like this movie and The Blob were probably terrifying in the 50s, but you watch them now and you have a good laugh. Sausage Party, an extremely vulgar and graphic movie, uh, crude, maybe the crudest I've ever seen. Uh, but it's an animated movie, which was kind of different. I really liked that it was unique in that way. And, uh, yeah, just a fun movie. Again, you're not going to watch this by yourself. Get a group of friends over. Maybe you're intoxicated. Maybe you're under the influence and you have a good time. Survival of the Dead. A zombie movie. Definitely not one of the better ones, but it's a George A. Romero zombie movie, so of course I own it. The Interview. Dodgeball. This movie is just comedy gold. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Remember the five D's of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Patches of Houlihan. He's a legend. Peter Pan, another movie I grew up on that was just fantastic. Great story. Superbad. Okay, this is a legendary comedy movie, no doubt. Avengers Endgame. When Tony Stark died in this movie, there were people sobbing. Iron Man, there are people sobbing in the movie theater. And I'm really into characters and movies. I can get really invested. But actual people crying, I was like, okay, you might be into it a little too much. Planet of the Apes trilogy on 4K. I really enjoyed the original Planet of the Apes movie with Charlton Heston. So this series right here I thought was extremely well done. 
All three of the movies are fantastic. They look incredible in 4K on a flat screen TV. The Incredibles 2 and 4K had to wait 14 years before we got Incredibles 2, but it was really good. Maybe not quite as good as the first one, but damn good, though. The Day After Tomorrow, a disaster movie, so I'm enjoying this. The CGI and special effects in this movie were incredible. I saw this when it was in theaters in 04, I think it was. Yeah, 2004. My friend got this five-action movie pack for me for my birthday last year. In this, you have Kick-Ass, Sin City, A History of Violence, The Crow, and Universal Soldier, Day of Reckoning. The Wolf of Wall Street, Taking Felon 1, 2, 3. Knives Out in 4K. This was a movie that's really going to make you think. It was a little bit like Murder on the Orient Express, except that's on a train. This is in a mansion. It was really entertaining. Got Chris Evans in this, Jamie Lee Curtis, Daniel Craig, Tony Collette. It's a mystery, crime-solving type movie. An intellectually stimulating movie. This is one where you must pay attention, though. It's not a casual watch. You have to be definitely watching, and you have to invest two hours of time and really pay attention to this movie, because if you are spacing in and out, you're definitely not going to be following or aware of what's going on. But a really well-done movie. Knocked Up, Midway, a really good war and history movie, The Battle of Midway, an important part of World War II, Air Force One in 4K, The Happening, M. Night Shyamalan's worst movie. You basically have the wind, once it blows on people, it's making them want to kill themselves. Um, yeah, and it's a shame, because Mark Wahlberg is a good actor. I really enjoy his movies, but this one right here, definitely uh, not a good one. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. A great Christmas movie, and Jim Carrey really portrayed the Grinch fantastically. This was a movie that really does the animated original short film a lot of justice. It's fantastic, and uh, I look forward to watching it every Christmas. Perfect Storm. Cannibal Holocaust. This is basically the original version of Green Inferno. Uh, extremely graphic and gory and... Uh, yeah, if you have a weak stomach, you're not going to want to watch this one. This is a film where you gather a bunch of people and you watch together and you just want to see what people's reactions are to seeing fucked up shit, quite frankly. I mean, it even says on the cover, it's a warning, due to its shocking and violent subject matter, no under 17 should view this film. I would maybe up that. If you're squeamish or the sight of blood uh, makes you ill, then definitely don't watch this film, for sure. This is basically a film that wants to gross you out and disturb you. Dunkirk in 4K. The visuals for this movie were good, but other than that, not very good, and I was expecting a really great war movie. Uh, like I said, war and history movies, I just, I think they're some of the best films ever made. I was expecting to see a Saving Private Ryan, a Fury, a Midway, a movie of that caliber, and definitely fell way short of that. I got it because I want to give it a second chance to see, do I warm up to it anymore? But I doubt it. I remember leaving the theater and was like, God, that was really bad and disappointing. I was looking at my phone being like, all right, when's this movie going to get good? When you're doing that, you're really not liking the film. Alien, the six film collection series, you have Alien 1 through 3, Alien Resurrection, Prometheus, and Alien Covenant. The first Alien, I think, is a pretty scary movie, actually. You're in space, you're on this ship with this creature, you don't know what exactly the f*** it is. Other than it's extremely capable of finding you and killing you. Apollo 13 in 4K. Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy, was fantastic in this film. No Country for Old Men. A movie is as intense as you're going to get and suspenseful. This could definitely be classified as a horror movie. Javier Bardem, the guy who is the main villain, is extremely terrifying. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Josh Brolin, this is a fantastic film. Winner of the 2007 Academy Awards and you got Best Picture. This is just a, an extremely well done film. And the ending for this movie is definitely a, I don't want to say a head scratcher, but it's a definitely an eyebrow raiser. And some people don't like the ending, but... Sometimes an open end ending works, and this is a film that I could argue it works. It doesn't ruin the film, the ending for me. This is a really great movie. Finding Nemo, a perfect film. A really perfect, inspiring film. Marlin the Clownfish looking for his lost boy, Nemo. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Where? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Excuse me. I didn't hear you. Excuse me. I'm fine. Bruce the Great White Shark. Now there is a father looking for his little boy. Never knew my father. Come here. Boy. Boy. Star Wars The Force Awakens. I was optimistic about the sequels after the original trilogy. Then The Last Jedi happened and I lost all faith. 
Dial M for murder. Ring 2. A Quiet Place, an original movie, and truly horrifying because the monsters in this movie, if you make any noise, they're just going to come and just take you away. And these are creatures you cannot fight back against. Like, it is done. And get a hold of you, it's over. I cannot wait for the second one. It's been pushed back now three times. I'm just... And it's incredible to make a great movie in which barely any words are spoken. I mean, the movie is quiet the whole time. And watching this in theaters was actually really eerie because everyone in the theater, along with the characters, is trying to be quiet. So anyone who tried to get a piece of candy out of the box or have popcorn or take a sip of their soda, like, you heard it clearly. So this was a memorable movie-going experience in theaters, and it's just a great, fantastic movie. This is one of my favorite films to watch. Underworld. The Descent. Now, this has an all-female cast, and not to sound like a complete woman hater, but usually those type of movies suck. And I appreciate this movie because the women in this movie, they don't just trip over themselves and scream and are helpless. These women go um, cave diving, and they get trapped. It's like an avalanche or boulder collapse, and they're trapped in this cave. And there's these cave-dwelling bat, human-like creatures that are just like superhuman almost with their ability to, like, scale walls and jump and, and all that. So <laughs> it is a really terrifying type movie. And if you're claustrophobic, you don't want to watch this movie. The claustrophobia and the idea of being trapped in a cave is, is kind of scary enough for most people. Then you wear these creatures into it, and it's a whole different ballgame. These chicks fight the fuck back. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is really a, a movie that a feminist would like because shows women empowerment. They're not just screaming and are helpless. Like, these chicks are fighting for their lives, which I felt like standing up and applauding when I saw this. Stuart Little and Stuart Little 2. Let's not forget Dr. House in this movie. Carrie. Youth in Revolt. Michael Cera's type of humor, that dry humor, I think is just hysterical. And this is a comedy movie that probably not a lot of people know about, but it's just a damn funny movie. Your Highness, one of the dumbest movies you're ever going to see. Natalie Portman... Danny McBride, James Franco, but it is so f dumb, but it is funny at times. The Revenant, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Blood Diamond, a great Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Caddyshack, of, of comedy movies, this could be on the Mount Rushmore. This is a fantastic comedy movie. Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Rodney Dangerfield, it's just an all-time classic. Captain America, Civil War. There's always been a rift between Iron Man and Captain America. Seeing them duke it out was entertaining to watch. Coach Carter. 1917 in 4K. A really good war and history film. The triple feature Austin Powers collection set. Austin Powers International Man of Mystery. Austin Powers The Spy Who Shagged Me. And Austin Powers Goldmember. Question. And be honest. Do I make you horny? Randy? Do I make you horny, baby? Yeah! The comedy, to me, never gets old, and these are extremely rewatchable movies. Michael Myers is just fantastic. And you got three just smoke shows. You got Elizabeth Hurley in the first one, Heather Graham in International Man of Mystery, and then Beyonce in Goldumber. So, an all-star cast of extremely attractive women as well. Into the Storm, this is basically the unfortunate-looking stepchild to a movie like Twister and The Day After Tomorrow. But it's still a disaster movie, so you just feel like watching some get destroyed and some CGI, that's kind of cool. Fast Times at Richmond High. No Escape. Life in 4K. This movie took a little inspiration from Alien. The Babadook. The Mummy Returns in 4K. Ed Astra. Definitely was a little disappointed in this movie. This was a slow burn, to put it kindly. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones and Brad Pitt, so that really made it a little disappointing because those are two actors I think that are very good. I'll have to watch it again, though, and give it a second chance. And it's an incredible bug movie. DreamWorks, Disney, Pixar. The two insect movies that I've seen on Bugs Life and Ants were both incredible. Pixar Short Films Collection Volume 1. No strings attached. The First Purge on 4K. The Purge Election Year on 4K. The Purge Anarchy. The Steelbook of The Shining. Stanley Kubrick's movies are always weird and intense. This is one that fits the bill. Step Brothers. I know a lot of people really love this film and they think it's hysterical. I think it's overrated. I really do. I don't think it's a outstandingly great 
comedy film. I really don't. I think it's okay at best. Uh, I think movies like Dodgeball are a lot funnier, but that's my taste. And hey, if you think Step Brothers is hilarious, you're entitled to that opinion. Sinister. A great horror movie. Underwater. The Hills Have Eyes, the remake. Henry. Hail Caesar. Yes, man. Play Misty for me. A good Clint Eastwood film. You're going to think twice about having casual sex after watching this movie. Clint Eastwood plays a DJ. He has sex with a woman who's a fan of his. She becomes a serial stalker. The Nun, a really kind of cool, creepy film that's in the Conjuring series that I enjoy. The Nightmare Before Christmas. This film has a cult-like following. I feel like if you say anything bad about this movie, I'd feel afraid. The people who are a fan of this movie might come to get you in the night. But I enjoy it, though. It's a good film. And when I was a kid, I watched this one quite frequently as well. Speed, a really good 90s action movie. A young Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. Definitely an exciting movie. Shadow of a Doubt. Get Out. Dirty Dancing. Lady and the Tramp, they are a couple goals. A movie I loved as a young boy as well. You got dogs, you got a great love story. It's certainly a feel-good movie. How can you not love Lady and the Tramp? The Mule, one of Clint Eastwood's most recent great films. The man is 90, still making good shit. It's incredible. Miss March. You can tell with the sleeve that comes around this movie that uh, if the sexual humor is an A-plus in this movie, it'll have you laughing your ass off if you enjoy sexual crude humor. I do. Monsters, Inc. in 4K. A perfect movie. Mike Wazowski, James P. Sullivan, Mr. Waterhouse, Randall, Boo, the slug who looks a little bit like Trump, who's asking Mike Wazowski for his paperwork. All are fantastic. Ma, this was a good horror movie. The Mist. Now, this is an ending that does not go for a feel-good ending. It's an ending that tries to make you cry. Fury, an excellent war and history film. Five-man crew on a deadly mission behind enemy lines. Really suspenseful movie. War films are just the best. They, they really are. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but they really are. They're my favorite type of films. Crazy Stupid Love. Godzilla, the 2014 remake. This was a Godzilla that looked the right way, not the 1998 Godzilla where they try to modernize them and it just did not work. Godzilla just didn't have enough screen time on this movie. I thought the human interest story and the characters weren't awful. Only was seven to eight minutes, I think, of Godzilla time. Not nearly enough. Godzilla, the 1998 version in 4K, this is not how Godzilla is supposed to look. I did enjoy the animated cartoon show in the late 90s. Fun kind of show because I'm a huge Godzilla fan. This is a Godzilla set my mother got me for Christmas last year. The Show Era Films Collection has all the Godzilla films from 1954 to 1975. And the booklet on this is amazing. It's almost like um, a comic book, if you will, when you go through... Um, all of the, uh, it has the title of the movie, then it has a synopsis of the movie and some artwork of it, like this is the terror of Mechagodzilla, then you got Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, <laughs> you got all monsters attack, some artwork and the description of the film, this is just a really cool set uh, for someone like me who's a huge Godzilla junkie. This was a great gift. So, thank you, Mom. 300, The Steel Book. This is a movie where if you're a guy and you watch it, your testosterone level just gets juiced up. This is Sparta! Uh, I thought Gerard Butler as Leonidas. Great A performance. Obviously, a movie that's not necessarily a great... Not a, I don't want to say it's not a great movie, but it's not one of the best pictures you're ever going to see. But a lot of action, a good plot, a good story. Great special effects. I think it's a fantastic film to watch. Very entertaining. The Fugitive. Patriot Games. Harrison Ford just makes really good movies. Pineapple Express. Rear Window. Ray. Jamie Foxx did a good job portraying Ray Charles. Pompeii. Definitely a disaster movie because the historical event of Pompeii. Leatherface shows the origins of the Sawyer family and how uh, Leatherface uh, came to be. So... This is a movie, if you like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you enjoy the origins of seeing how everything came about. Night of the Living Dead. This is a movie that started off the zombie genre. George A. Romero is just a fantastic director and human for creating this genre that a lot of us still love to this day. Shows like The Walking Dead. Uh, good chance it might never have happened if it wasn't for this man in this movie. The Commuter. Midsommar. You feel like you're going crazy while the movie's going on, which is something that, as a director of a movie like this, you're doing something right if you're making you feel like you're going crazy while watching it. And it's also, from a shock value, very entertaining to watch. 
Monsters University in 4K. Money Monster. The Purge in 4K. As time goes on, I kind of get this eerie feeling that this is more and more like a possibility, <laughs> unfortunately. Pawn Sacrifice. Avatar. Iron Man 3. Iron Man 2. Shrek 2. This is a perfect movie. Arguably better or just as good as the first. Dumbo, another movie I grew up on. Fantastic flick. Madagascar. The Blob, a horror movie in the 50s, a B-movie that's now a great comedy, if you will. The Blob is just engulfing everything and getting bigger and bigger. Uh, very entertaining. Day of the Dead, a good 1980s zombie movie. Defiance. Freddy vs. Jason. Sorority Row, you got hot chicks getting picked off one by... It's kind of like Black Christmas a little bit. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Scorpion King. Torn Curtain. Apollo 13. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Not as good as Pet Detective, but a solid comedy. Rocky, The Heavyweight Collection. You got Rocky 1 through, one through 6 and Rocky Balboa in this series. Pretty much after Rocky IV, it was kind of sad and pathetic. The Birds, one of Alfred Hitchcock's best films. Hostel, Part 2. The Other Woman. Paranormal Activity. You got the six-film collection here. American Pie, fantastic classic movie. Comedy Gold. Shark Tale. Friday the 13th, a remake. The Incredibles on 4K, Disney and Pixar will forever be winning because of movies like this. Robin Hood, The Sixth Sense, one of M. Night Shyamalan's better films. Rebecca, really good Alfred Hitchcock movie. District 9 in 4K. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri in 4K. Top Gun in 4K, great Tom Cruise movie. The Mummy in 4K, Tom Cruise's version with Russell Crowe, and this doesn't compare to Brendan Fraser's. But I'm a big Tom Cruise fan, and this movie wasn't completely garbage, but almost garbage, but fun to watch, though. You could have a fun garbage movie. Nightcrawler, Jake Gyllenhaal had a great performance in this. Parasite. Escape Room, you pretty much have the PG-13 version of Saw. Solid movie. Fantasy Island, the last movie I saw before COVID came. The Wizard of Oz in 4K, an all-time classic. And Zombieland. That's all, folks, for my complete 4K and Blu-ray movie collection. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button down below, as well as that notification bell. That way you are notified about the next Brian Woolley movie review. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Until next time, keep watching flicks and collecting kicks. I'm Ryan Woolley, officially signing off, saying thank you and hasta la vista, baby.